Hello everyone, and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia lost can be found. In today's video, I'll be reviewing the new worm print, dragon, and adventurer earned for free by playing the Kindness and Captivity raid event, with a special focus on the new character Melsa. Adventurer spotlights are something I'd like to make in the future, so you can think of this video as a test run. I'll briefly touch on Better Together and Sylvia, since there isn't too much to say, before highlighting Melsa, including an overview with build ideas, a gameplay showcase, and impressions of her adventurer's story. So to start, allow me to spend one minute on Better Together and Sylvia. You should fully unbind Better Together and use it on your strongest attacker in the raid thanks to its Hypnosis Bane ability. The rest of your team is just as well, if not better off, just using a shapeshift prep worm print like Dragon Arcanum. Keep a single fully unbound copy and sell the rest for Eldwater, if you can bear to part with the truly stunning artwork. As for Sylvia, you should definitely try to get all five copies of her from the raid so you can fully unbind her. Once you do, she's a great choice for wind healers, tanks, and some support units, and comparable to base Strabog with her plus 30% buff to HP, except her skill doesn't draw foes towards the user like Strabog's does. Nevertheless, hang on to her, especially if you're a free-to-play player. Here's the bottom line with free worm prints and dragons. They're good budget picks. Since they're easy to fully unbind, their stats can be made better than those of their gacha counterparts until you unbind those gacha pulls three times. A pretty hard feat to accomplish as a low spending player. For example, until you have four total copies of Strabog, your max unbound Sylvia can provide more stats if you level her up sufficiently. The same is true for Better Together and any four star gacha worm print, although in that case, the abilities matter as much as the stats do. I would say Better Together's HP threshold ability is good, but the percentage is fairly low, so an aggressive, twice unbound, gacha four star worm print is probably on par. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about Melsa. I was just out relaxing in the sun, and the village was thrown into an uproar. Melsa is a 4 star, flame element, support role dagger user, obtained for free by maxing out her friendship in the Kindness and Captivity raid event. Melsa's max HP is 437, and her max strength is 734 giving her the same total base stats as Cleo, another free unit. If you've seen any of my previous videos, or if you get the picture from the previous discussion of Better Together and Sylvia, you already know that the stats of free units are weaker in general than those of gacha units. And however adorable Melsa may be, sadly she's middle of the road in both HP and strength. The free unit from the previous raid, Celiera, had lower total stats than Melsa, but was redeemed by her fairly high strength. Melsa, as a support unit rather than an attacker, has much more balanced stats, and she's worse for it, making her stand out less against comparable options, who we'll get to in a moment. The other slightly questionable thing about Melsa is her skill and ability kit. It isn't bad, but it makes you wonder how her support role comes in since none of her skills buff, debuff, or do anything but damage. Coupled with Melsa's abilities, which up damage to Physians, grant sleep res, and raise critical rate with a high combo count, it almost seems as though Melsa should have been an attacker, just like Celiera. Of course, Celiera being a water blade wielder isn't really the right point of comparison for Melsa, even if she does provide some context about the stats of previous free units. Instead, let's get to her real competition. There are two other flame, dagger support units in the gacha pool already, Renell and Azalith, both of whom can match Melsa in terms of usefulness and are just as cute to boot. What is love anyway? Oh, just thinking about it makes me flushed out. Alright, maybe not quite as cute. Anyway, first I'll discuss Ezlith, since the contrast here is stark. 
When compared to Melsa, as a Gacha 5 star, Azalith has higher stats, a stronger co ability, more sleep resistance, access to a third ability without promotion, and arguably a better, more all purpose kit. If you already have Azalith, there's almost no reason to use Melsa, unless you really have resources to throw around and just love her character. You technically could include both on your flame team, which might work decently during the raid, but you'd generally be better served by filling Melsa's slot with an adventurer who offers your team a different co-ability. Now for the gacha 3 star Rennell, where the comparison is more of a toss up. You might look at her max stats in comparison to Melsa's and think, Melsa is clearly better, right? And although I wouldn't say your conclusion is necessarily wrong, it's worth looking a bit more closely in this case. Melsa's max stats do surpass those of Rennell, but what if you were to compare their max stats as 4 star units? The gap narrows significantly. Rennell actually edges out Melsa by 1 or 2 stat points, but Melsa makes up that ground and ultimately comes out a few points ahead when you factor in mana circles. Still, we're talking the tiniest margin here. Melsa basically has 2 more HP and 1 more strength, and that's once you get to 40 mana nodes unlocked for both, so realistically, their stats are virtually identical, but at an extra cost of 2500 Eldwater for Rennell. Then we get to the kits. Put simply, if your focus is the current raid or current wind content like Imperial Onslaught, then Melsa is the superior choice. Fizian's Bane increases her damage to Hypnos, her sleep resistance is relevant against it, her co-ability is better, and her skills charge slightly faster. But outside of that context, and perhaps for future content, Rennell holds her own, especially for a 3 star. Rennell's second skill deals damage, and has a 30% chance to debuff enemy defense once upgraded. Her first ability, Flurry Devastation, is more widely useful than Fizian's Bane, and Curse Res is rare on a flame unit. But ultimately, you have to ask yourself, with the game's current content, just where do I need Curse Res on a flame unit, and what wide use do I have in mind with Flurry Devastation? While Rennell's kit is theoretically intriguing, Melsa's is pragmatic, and she won't cost you Eldwater to build up. So, all said, if you don't have Ezalith, Melsa is a fine choice. Better than Rennell, practically speaking. But if you're a huge Rennell fan, she's not too far off the mark either. Melsa's Physian's Bane makes her especially suited for the ongoing raid, and that's what I want to show off in my gameplay showcase. I'll be using my B squad, not my main raid team, but a less trained secondary group to demonstrate what Melsa can do. While that plays for you, let me talk a little bit about some build ideas for her. In the context of the raid, of course, you'll want the Better Together worm print if Melsa is your primary damage dealer, or a Shapeshift prep worm print if she's a secondary member of your team. Outside of that, anything that can boost skill damage will work nicely with her two offensive skills. So for players who participated in the Halloween event, Plunder Pals is an excellent option. For dragons, you could go with Phoenix if you lack a proper healer, or any of the many aggressive flame dragons otherwise. Pele is a good choice for low spending players if you got her in the Loyalty's Requiem raid. As far as weapons go, just use the strongest dagger you have available, particularly those whose crafting tree extends toward the flame element since Melsa appreciates having yet another attacking skill. And finally, when it comes to teammates, Melsa works well with partners who boost her damage output and ability to activate her skills quickly, which makes Wand, Bow, and Blade units great companions. In this footage, since I'm focused on the flame element, I've brought along Sinoa for her skill damage co-ability, Joe for his skill haste, and Aoi for her strength co ability. If you find yourself taking too much damage with Melsa on the front lines, you can also bring a healer or Phoenix along, like I did here, or set your helper as a healer in single player. If you want to resist the sleep ailment in particular, then Carl, 
Aoi, Orion, Sinoa, and Navid are good allies. All in all, Melsa, just like Sylvia and Better Together, isn't bad. It just comes down to what else you have from the gacha pool. But while Sylvia and Better Together take multiple copies to surpass, pretty hard to achieve except as a whale, Melsa is overtaken as soon as someone pulls an Ezla. So if that describes you, then probably don't invest too much in Melsa. But if you don't have Ezlith, especially since she was already featured on a showcase, then Melsa is a good flame ally, doubly so for this raid. Finally, to wrap up this video as the battle comes to a close, I'll just give a couple of quick thoughts on Melsa's story, since I don't want to spoil too much. When I was young, I remember details about weeks worth of meals. Even my parents were shocked. Melsa is known for her exceptional memory, so it's a shame this isn't reflected much in her kit. Still, this creates a few fun scenarios for her interactions with the rest of the main cast. By far the best scenes are those she shares with Cerise, as depicted on the Better Together worm print, and I adored how wholesome their blossoming friendship was. While Celiera brought more humor, Melsa still delivered a feel-good tale, and whether you like or dislike her faux French accent, there's no denying Melsa's endearing design and behavior. And with that, the battle comes to an end. The Empire put Melsa through so much pain, I'll never forgive them. Alright, and that's going to do it for this video. What do you think of Melsa and her adventurer story? Do you love her and Cerise as much as I do? Are you using her on your raid team? And what is your opinion so far? Do you want more single character videos like this? I'd love to know in the comments below. With that said, thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time.